This video will be an introduction to the allele group. So generically speaking, the allyl group is this functionality right here. So we've got a CH2, CH double bond, CH2. So we have an sp3 hybridized carbon with a double bond next door, so two sp2 hybridized carbons. So I'm going to draw out an example of the simplest allylic system, which is one propene, and I'm going to draw the H's on here. So I've got one, two, three carbons. The double bond is the highest priority, so that would be one propene. So there's a couple distinctions we can make here. These protons that are on the double bond are called vanillic protons, and the protons that are next door to the double bond are called allylic protons. And so the position next to the double bond is always the allylic position. And the number of H's there varies on what the system is. So it doesn't have to have three H's, it could have two, it could have one, it could have none but the allylic position by definition is next to the double bond. So because carbon 3 is next to carbons 1 and 2 which are double bonded, it is the allylic position. So we can sometimes refer to molecules by common names or IUPAC names because the allylic position is a well-known position and it's pretty reactive. We sometimes refer to things as allyl something. So I want to show you an example of how we would do each. If we look at this first compound here, the alcohol, Alcohols are a higher priority than double bonds, so we would start numbering at the carbon with the alcohol on it. One, two, three. So this would be two propene, one all. Okay, so the two tells us where the ene is, so the double bond starts at the second carbon, and the one tells us where the alcohol is. Now over here, the highest priority group is the alkene. It's a higher priority than a halide. So one, two, three. So this would be three bromo propene. And since it's at the one position, I can leave out the one. If there's no locant for the double bond, that tells me that it's at the one position. But these are also referred to by their common names. So the common name for this first compound would be allyl alcohol, so that tells me that there's an alcohol at the allylic position, which is this position again next door to the double bond. This other guy would be called allyl bromide, and again that tells me that there is a bromine at the allylic position. So these two are common names for simple molecules that involve the allylic system, and you will sometimes see that. So I want you to be comfortable and familiar with what an allyl alcohol or an allyl bromide is. This is a horrible Y. There we go. Now, the allylic position is pretty reactive, and that's because when an intermediate is formed, it's resonance stabilized. So if we look at some examples of allylic positions, this would be an allylic cation. And so if we have some leaving group leave and form a carbocation, we have resonance structures. And so that charge is stabilized over two carbon atoms, making it more stable. And so if the rate determining step is or involves the leaving group leaving, it's going to be expediated by a resonance stabilized intermediate. So the most familiar intermediate we've seen is the carbocation, but also other intermediates would be stabilized in the same manner, and we'll look at that next. So we can add one electron at a time. This is a radical. Remember that when I move radicals, I'm moving one electron at a time, so I use single-headed arrows. So what happens is this radical comes in, one of the radicals from the pi bond comes in, and those two that I've just drawn are making a new double bond on that right-hand side of the molecule. 
there's still one pi bond, or one electron left in that pi bond, and so that electron is going to go on to the other guy as a radical. So the radical can be shared over more than one atom, which is stable. We've seen one example of a reaction, or a couple, I guess. We have radical intermediates. Uh, like every other intermediate, they're stabilized by being able to share. So this would be our radical. And then, of course, the same thing will be true with an anion. So we could add two electrons now. So once I have two electrons on a carbon, we've got the H that's showing, uh, or that's not showing because of the line angle formula. Here, these can fold in and kick these out. We've not seen many intermediates that have a negative charge on a carbon yet. However, you have pushed lone pairs of electrons in resonance, particularly around a benzene ring for an electron donating group. So now my negative charge is over here on the left-hand side, and I have my double bond on the right-hand side. So any of these intermediates with an allylic group can be resonance stabilized and that makes them a little bit more reactive because whatever intermediate is formed is going to be more stable.